Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, June 9th. I'm Patricia Vallow. And I'm Gina Barti. Thank you for joining us tonight. Prince George's police are investigating an officer-involved shooting that occurred earlier today in Upper Marlboro. The incident took place a little after 10.30 a.m. on Crane Highway, just south of Pennsylvania Avenue. Rochelle Metzger is on the scene with the latest. Uniformed officers and detectives from the Prince George's County Police Department have been here in this Upper Marlboro shopping center off Crane Highway for several hours now investigating a police involved shooting. Investigators tell us that the events leading up to the shooting actually began last night when Baltimore City Police reported to Prince George's Police a vehicle had been stolen from their jurisdiction. And then today, members of the WAVE unit, the Washington Area Vehicle Enforcement Unit, which tracks stolen vehicles throughout the D.C. metro area, actually tracked that Ford Mustang to this location. A lot of cops around. Whole lot. Many people arrived at this Upper Marlboro Shopping Center this morning only to find a large area between Route 4 and Route 301 taped off and police collecting evidence in the parking lot. Just crazy. Joe Ward was inside the giant food when the incident took place. It was kind of scary because, I mean, I wouldn't expect nothing to happen like this out here. Ward says he, along with customers, were held inside the store for several hours. I haven't been any anything like this ever. Authorities say members of the auto theft unit found the stolen Ford Mustang around 10.45 a.m. with two armed men inside. They call their supervisors and get permission for a takedown. At that point, one of our officers sees a suspect pull a weapon. The a witness reports hearing the officer yell to the suspect, don't touch the weapon. That's when one officer fired multiple shots, striking both suspects. The two men were transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Neither officer was hurt. Right now, our investigators are looking into what witnesses may have seen or heard, checking for surveillance video. Investigators believe the suspects came to the shopping center to rob the SunTrust Bank. This photo shows one of two firearms recovered, along with gloves found inside the stolen car. Police tell us that the shopping center will be blocked off for another couple hours. No one has been allowed inside this giant food store. The customers who were inside since this morning have since been allowed to leave. Now we're told that the officer involved in the shooting, the one that discharged his weapon, has been with Prince George's police for four years. Before that, he served 12 years with a local law enforcement agency. He's been put on paid suspended leave, which is typical protocol in this sort of case, pending an outcome of the investigation. In Upper Marlboro, I'm Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. Police are asking witnesses or anyone with information related to this case to give them a call at 301-856-2660. Again, that number is 301-856-2660. The Prince George's County Council sends a stern message to County Executive Rashern Baker. You may recall yesterday that Baker vetoed a bill that would increase the tax rate for parking planning by 1.5 percent. Today, the council unanimously voted to override that veto. CTV Sonia Srivastava has more. Well, council members here unanimously voted to override that veto by County Executive Rashern Baker. Now, yesterday, the county executive said that he was appalled that the council would add in this 1.5 cent increase to the park and planning budget, saying that they never asked for it. Well, today, Council Chairman Mel Franklin said that is simply not true, that they are committed to education, but they feel that parks and planning is equally important, and they feel that this increase is needed. With all due respect to the county executive, with whom we have worked together on a variety of issues, and for whom we have great respect, this veto is disappointing and fiscally irresponsible. Also, if the county executive's veto is sustained, it could mean cuts of 20% or more to vital programs for youth, like the Safe Summer Program at 24 community centers around the county. Now, County Executive Baker said yesterday that he wants all of the funding that is coming from these tax increases to go to education, and that is one of the reasons that he is vetoing the bill. This is some of what he had to say yesterday. I'm appalled that the council, council members who ran on improving education would quietly divert additional tax dollars away from our schools. Let me lay it out for you. The County Council raised your property taxes by 5.5 cents 
of which 1.5 cents of that increase goes to park and planning, not what should be our top priority, and that is our education system. Now, County Executive Baker has until next Tuesday to decide on the rest of the budget, and that includes a 4% hike in property taxes. In Apple Marlboro, I'm Sonia Shrivasva. Back to you. And the county executive has until next Tuesday to decide on the rest of the budget, which includes a 4% property tax increase. A group called the Opportunity Collaborative has released a report aimed at addressing poverty and other issues in the Baltimore area. The group included government agencies, academia, and nonprofits. The aim was to identify the links between housing, transportation, and workforce development issues and to develop a long term plan that would start to reduce opportunity gaps in the Baltimore region. Work, we, um, we spent a lot of time researching the data to find out exactly what the jobs were that could lift a family out of poverty. We identified 39 occupations in six employment sectors that all pay a living wage to someone mm -hmm. with less than a college degree. So the next steps are to rethink some of our training programs at the community college level with nonprofit adult educators, and then to do some planning on our end to map out what exactly needs to happen for job seekers to move into these careers. Those aren't expensive things to do. Those aren't huge long-term agendas. Mm -hmm. it's, it's things that we can turn around very quickly and can immediately have impacts with the population we're trying to help. The report also calls for developing affordable housing in new construction projects, launching new transit routes to connect low-income residents to jobs, and making it easier to expunge criminal records. Members of the group say the proposals are doable. There is no uh, momentum without some friction. And so we should be prepared for that. Uh, you know, there's, there's always some apprehension about what change means and what change implies for certain, for, for, for certain individuals. I think by and large, um, you know, people have, have come to understand that this is, uh, that our sort of collective ability to grow and succeed, it really relies on all of us. Baltimore was one of several cities that won a grant to study regional sustainability issues. The trial begins for a man who killed a mother in front of her children. 24-year-old Rashik Bell is charged with murdering Kaya Wilson in November 2011. The incident stemmed from a fight that took place at an Oxen Hill apartment complex, resulting in the death of Jakari Butler. Bell believed that Wilson's boyfriend had killed Butler, so the next day he allegedly went to his home and shot Wilson as retribution. She was in a bedroom with four children at the time, ranging in age from two to seven years old. Wilson's seven-year-old daughter called 911 to report the shooting. It was later discovered that Wilson's boyfriend was not involved in Butler's death. Bell also faces firearms and conspiracy charges. The trial is expected to last three days. Well, the National Transportation Safety Board recommends immediate action be taken to fix electrical hazards on Metro. The report released yesterday as part of the NTSB's ongoing investigation into a January smoke incident at LaFont Plaza. Dozens were sickened and one female passenger died when toxic smoke filled the southwest tunnel. Inspectors found third rail power connections were improperly constructed and installed, allowing moisture and contaminants to enter electrical components. The report says that uh, that created a potential for short-circuiting fire and smoke. Metro released a statement saying it will immediately begin installing the recommended water or weather tight seals on third power rail fe feeds and jumper connections. Agency officials are expected to discuss the issue during a board meeting on Thursday. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. And I'm Gina Bartini.